Paul, we now know that we kind of need another thing to kind of help us explain what's going on in the outside. We need magnetic fields, but what are magnetic fields? Well, you're all familiar with a magnet. So here we have a bar magnet and you know that they can attract and repel yep. each other. And what we actually model this as is having field lines that go out of one pole and down to the other. Yep. And we actually see them on Earth. If you take a magnet and you sprinkle iron filings over the top, this may well be an experiment you did at school, yep. but here's a picture uh, of iron filings being spread over it, and you can see they form lines. So we These have lines the, the are magnetic the... field coming in and out, essentially. That's right, going from the North Pole to the South Pole. So those are magnetic field lines. Now, we have a magnetic field in this room as we're filming here. Yeah. There'll be the Earth's magnetic field. There's probably also magnetic fields from the electricity cables that power the lights and the camera and everything else in here. But we're... It's not, yeah, yeah. it's not affecting us. Yeah. Uh, if you had a, I remember once going to a magnet lab at Oxford University and they warned anyone with pacemakers not to go in because the magnetic field is so strong it actually ripped the pacemaker out of the person's body. Yeah, that wouldn't be good. MRI <laughs> machines, you have to take all your metal off because that magnetic field may actually rip it in, off in the room. But normally it doesn't affect air. So why would it affect the sun? And the reason is that the sun, because it's hot, is ionized, as we've talked about. Yep. That means it's got free charges. And when you get a charge near a magnetic field, you have trouble. So in the simulation, what we're seeing is the air in this room, and it's completely ignoring the magnetic field yeah. because the air is neutral. All the oxygen and nitrogen molecules have not lost any electrons, so they just, huh, not we, paying attention. we laugh at magnetic fields. But now let's imagine we strip some of those electrons off and put in some magnetic field lines. So these greens are the magnetic field lines. Right, and now we see what the matter's doing. So these ionized particles now that have this charge are spinning around these magnetic field lines. That's right, so a iron an electron or a charged particle moving, that's basically electric, that's a current. Yep. Moving charge is a current. And when you get a current magnetic field, it's given a sideways force, and that causes it to spiral around the field lines, as you're seeing over here. So they're following these magnetic field lines as they go around in the sun. That's right. So now if we look at a movie of some of the surface of the sun, we're now seeing all these yeah. uh, bands, and what we're looking at is particles being trapped and moving along the magnetic field lines. So we have a magnetic field, they're stuck to it because they're ionized, so they have to travel in these loops around these lines coming out of it. But there's multiple lines here. That's right. Um, so there are multiple magnetic fields coming, from, presumably from every sunspot, your magnetic field lines coming out and going in another one, and you get things moving around. But it's more complicated than that. I mean, this whole field is called, it's got a very long name, which is magnetohydrodynamics. But we all call it MHD. Yep. And it's complicated because if you get a magnetic field, yep. that will affect the motion of ionized particles, like we've just seen. Yep. But ionized particles are electric currents, electric currents to magnetic fields. So yeah, one affects the other, but that affects the same thing. So you get a kind of vicious cycle that you, the magnetic field makes the charged particles move in a different direction. And because they're moving in a different direction, it directs a new magnetic field, which in turn makes the particles move a different way, which in turn, <laughs> and it gets really complicated. So this is just keep going on and on and on. And you can see the sort of level of complication in the, all these glorious movies. So what's happening here is a very complicated interplay. So you've got magnetic fields and particles moving along them. Yep. But as the particles move along them, they in turn change the magnetic fields and push the magnetic fields, which in turn moves more things. And so if we look at a whole bunch of different wavelengths, we see explosions and loops and flares and all sorts of complicated and very glorious things going on. Again, these pictures are taken in the extreme ultraviolet and X-ray wavelengths. So the actual photosphere looks black. And what we're seeing is the much hotter millions of degrees gas, which is playing all these silly games moving up and down the field lines in complicated ways. But this is constantly essentially happening on the outside of our sun. Yes, and these images are taken by the NASA's SDO satellite, Solar Dynamics Observer, and it shows what's going on in this very tenuous corona of the sun, and it's really complicated and really beautiful. Yeah, and it's all because magnetism is at play with some ionized particles that affect some more magnetism and some more ionized particles. That's right. So the question is, where does the magnetic field actually come from? Well, don't we need to understand that? We do.